Hi, this is Ken Hendrickson, W6BZY, the Digital Ham. In this video, we're going to take a look at Manjaro Linux. Manjaro is an Arch-based Linux that is pretty full-featured and has everything you would expect in a full-service operating system. It makes Arch Linux friendly, easy to use, easy to install. So let's get right to it. One of the things that Arch Linux lacked uh, as it comes out of the box or as you set it up is a package manager or a graphical user interface, I should say, for installing software. So they created a program called PAMAC. And this is what you see here. It's uh, when you look on it in the directory, it says uh, add and use software. That's uh, the icon name. So I'm typing in my super secret password and you can see I'm going through and uh, the first settings are how you want uh, updates to happen and so forth. They check every six hours. You can have them automatically downloaded. I chose not to do that. It tells you how many uh, different threads that if you have a fast internet, pick the number up and it'll download things faster. And I've selected the United States for mirrors. Some people say leave it on world, but uh, I'm going to change it to the United States. And this is also where we're going to set it up to use the Arch user repository and to use flat packs. So we're going to go to the third uh, choice up there under preferences. And you'll see here we can choose to turn on the Arch user repository. You can choose whether or not you want it to check for updates. I'm going to choose it whether or not I would uh, choose to have those updates. Uh, here we go. Uh, sorry about that. I'm going to choose to turn on the Arch user repository. I'm also going to choose to have it do updates uh, or at least check for updates. I may be a little hesitant with my radio programs to actually install the updates unless I'm sure they're working. You can also uh, turn on flat packs and whether you want it to check uh, for updates. You can turn on snaps. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't use any snap programs at the moment anyway. Uh, once you're done with this, uh, you will discover that it's not going to be showing you the uh, flat hub repository because in order to get it working one of the things you have to do is you have to log out and log back in again it's only showing the arch user repository and the main uh, arch repositories so at this point i'm going to log out and log back in again and after i do that we'll be able to see uh, flat packs being uh, listed along with everything else. So I'm going to stop the video here and we'll come back after I've restarted it. You don't have to restart your computer. You just have to log out and log back in for it to take effect. And now when we go up and we search for WSJTX, uh, it will show more than one choice. So you'll see the first choice, that's a flat pack choice. And if you go down, it will tell you that. And I'm going to choose not to use flat packs here, but you could. They're the latest version. But the Arch user repository also has the latest version. And right here, I am going to uh, install it. And I type in my super secret password. And I recorded the whole thing, but I'm going to save you watching the whole thing. I'm going to pause the video here, and I'll let you know how long it took to install. Uh, in order not to totally think that it's failing, if you click that right arrow, you can see the installation going on. Unlike other operating systems that I know of, Arch Linux, you 
actually download the source code or different things like that. You compile the software and it is then installed directly onto your system. So it's actually made or built onto your system. And this whole process took about 10 minutes. So I went and had coffee and uh, uh, if you want to sit and watch the screen go by, if you decide to do this type of install, uh, more power to you, I guess. You can see all the different steps that it goes through. Uh, and one of the things you can see if it starts failing on you, it will give you error messages uh, to let you know what part didn't work. I've never found these error messages to be particularly helpful because I'm not a computer uh, expert, or I shouldn't say that. I'm not a Linux expert. I'm not a system administrator or someone who has spent their career working in computers. I'm just a hobbyist who likes ham radio and computers and tries to combine the two and have fun. Uh, I do have lots of computer experience, but I don't have a lot of computer training. Anyway, this is what happens each time that you install a software onto an Arch-based system. And it sometimes takes longer than others based on the complications of the system or how complicated it is. But here we are winding up at the end of about uh, 10 plus minutes. I think it was about 11 or 12 minutes. And in the next uh, segment, we'll be installing the rest of our ham radio software. So. That's it for this section. The process is going to be the same for FL Digi, FL Rig, Grid Tracker, and CQR Log. All we need to do is search for them. <clears throat> In the case of CQR Log, there is no flat, for flat pack version, so we'll be installing it directly from the Arch user repository. Some of you may have seen my video where I was saying I couldn't use Arch, and that was because the uh, Arch user repository versions of CQR log didn't work. And that started in the middle of the summer, and along about December, voila, they started working or someone had fixed it. I even posted on the Arch user uh, repository that things weren't working. I repeated this process installing the Arch user repository version of FLDigi, FLRig, WSJTX, and Grid Tracker. And in the next section, I'm going to show you a little bit of a secret surprise, so hang in there. I don't know how much my screen has changed, but uh, this is Manjaro KDE Desktop running on a Raspberry Pi. You'll notice it has a little bit of a different background in the menus, but the uh, otherwise it looks pretty much like Manjaro did on my laptop, I think. Uh, I, did a lot, I installed it on one of my Raspberry Pis, and uh, it's a little laggy. I wouldn't recommend it as the desktop of choice for a Raspberry Pi. I got kind of excited when it had the add and remove software, PAMAC, already installed. It doesn't have as much software installed. Of course, it wouldn't because it's made to run on a lighter system. But I actually went in to add and remove software, typed in WSJTX, installed it, and lo and behold, it doesn't work because it's not written for the ARM processor that you find in a Raspberry Pi. But it was a lot of fun trying it out, and I just thought I'd let you see how similar it is. If you want to try out some of these desktops on your Raspberry Pi, Manjaro is one you can certainly take a look at and see what it, uh, what it does and how it looks. And uh, remember, it's going to run a lot differently on a a uh, more powerful machine like my laptop. In this section, I'm going to be hooking up or setting up all of my different uh, ham radio, uh, just like I did in my previous videos. In this one, uh, in, in uh, Arch Linux, they instead of using a dial-up group, they use a group called 
UUCP, and I have no idea what it is. It took some experimenting to find it out. Each uh, Linux distribution seems to have about 60 groups, and you need to be the uh, belong to the one that gives access to the serial ports. I'll put the code that I'm typing in here in the show notes so that if you're working on Manjaro and you can't get your uh, radio, it keeps giving you an error message. Make sure that you're part of this particular group. So that's what I'm doing here. And like I said, it took a little experimenting and a little searching to find out which one of these groups it was. Yeah, but once I did find out, uh, everything was fine. Don't forget, after you add yourself to a group, to log out and log back in. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is start up um, FL Rig and get hooked up. And I played around a little bit with this because I kind of forgot that I had to join that group. So uh, the uh, serial port that you want to hook up to may vary. Mine is usually either USB 0 or USB 1. And I just play around to figure out which one it is. Or I, if I get desperate, I actually go in and uh, look in the file system and unplug uh, my USB cable and see which, <laughs> see which one is which because it disappears from the listing. You go into your uh, root file system and look under dev and TTY is one of the groups and you keep going down until you find USB. Okay, next I'm starting up WSJTX and this is of the recording of this video is the latest version and it was downloaded from the Arch user repository and here I'm quickly going through and setting up uh, setting myself up. Just This is just a test just to make sure it's working. And going down here, I missed the display distance in miles, but uh, I'll fix that before I start using it. And I go down and choose for the radio or the rig control. It's going to be FL rig. And I, it's in alphabetical order. Did a little fumbling around here. There was another one that started with F and started that was it, but it's FL rig, FL rig. And you don't have to set up a server because uh, it's not using the server, it's just directly controlling the radio. And cat, data, fake it is my usual settings. When you start it up, you're going to find out you need to fix your sound card. And uh, in my case, it's always Kodak USB. I just make sure, and it's the burr one, I don't know what that means, but I make sure I get the input in the input place and the output in the and then the output is the only thing that I have to choose. Once I do those two things, uh, it's going to start working. Uh, one of the things that I have to do before I use uh, my logging program is going to be uh, to turn on uh, the communication port. But first we'll start up Grid Tracker. Grid Tracker connects directly to um, connects directly to WSJTX and then it sends on the um, information to my logging program. So you'll notice here I'm checking that I want to uh, it's receiving it on 2237 which is the one that uh, WSJTX sends off and then what I want to do is I want to export it to uh, CQR log. So uh, Grid Tracker is the one feeding uh, my logging program, CQR log. And I forgot to put CQR log down at the bottom, so I had to type it in there. And here we are starting up CQR log. And I've already gone through all the setup process. I have videos on that if you're interested. Uh, it goes through all the different steps. The only thing that I've changed is that now, instead of putting information and trying to run WSJTX from CQR log, I let FL rig do the running. So you make your changes in uh, preferences. Here I'm just turning on WSJT remote so that the logging part will work. It's not controlling the, the uh, radio or anything. It's just so that the information comes in.
and if you look under WSJTX it says to run it and I've changed the port from 2237 to 2238 so it's getting it from grid tracker and it's not actually running it because if you notice there was a blank line there now this is not my full setup you'll notice I'm getting red <laughs> uh, oh and I here's the turning on the reporting part you need to turn this on so that it's sending it off to 2237 so grid tracker can pick it up what I was going to say was I haven't gone through my full setup uh, so that anything coming in uh, showing up as red is a new continent because it's not I haven't put in the data from my other WSJTX installations on other computers uh, which if I were using this full time or if I were using this <laughs> anytime I would have done that so you might look at my video on that I'll try to remember to put them both in the links below uh, so that you can take a look and see how to get rid of this each time you set up a new WSJTX it doesn't know any of the things that you've done before so you're going to want to do it correctly and I have a video I think I might have done it on the Raspberry Pi but it works on any of the Linux systems and um, as you can see a lot of activity on 17 meters I originally started off in uh, on 20 meters but it was so busy I decided I'd switch down to uh, 17 meters I also get out really well on uh, 17 meters so I'm hoping I can make a contact here so that you can actually see me getting it logged and of course this is always an adventure in uh, <laughs> hoping things work you'll notice I'm using two screens as I did in uh, my a previous video any of the Linux distros will do this this one's a little different there's two squares down at the bottom I'm just using them to switch back and forth you'll notice I got a reply here uh, we're both hearing each other really well so it shouldn't take too long and then I will demonstrate that it's logging it to my CQR log and oh I didn't I I was in error he's still calling CQ I thought I had a response there um, but like I said I'm hearing him really well so I'm hoping he should be able to hear me uh, if I don't get a response here this time I'll probably switch to a uh, different uh, no nah, he's not hearing me so what I am going to do for this purpose is here is to switch to a different uh, to a different station I'm not hearing this station as well but remember that just because you hear a station really well doesn't mean that he's going to hear you back some stations are using amplifiers some are using beams and uh, things that make them get out really well but they may not necessarily be hearing you as well and here we go I've got uh, a response here and uh, if you go down to the uh, RRR line if you double click on the TX4 I could have changed it to RR73 which I usually do it shortens the process by one step but uh, yeah he's only hearing me as a minus 14 so I guess I'm not going to get excited about that um, he sent me a 73 though and I'm sending him a 73 and at that point I forgot to turn on log Q so you can do that set it up so it automatically will pop up with this window and I'm going to put in 40 because I'm uh, transmitting at about 40 watts don't have my receiver all the way or my transmitter all the way up now I don't have sound on here so I guess I didn't hear the bing or the, you didn't hear it either but here it is it's recorded in my logbook and you can see that was the first entry and as I said it was just a sample to let you know what it was going to look like this entire video is being produced on the Manjaro operating system the desktop is KDE which has not been in customized in any way later on you'll see some of the customizations that I do to it to make it look like uh, make it look different <laughs> uh, 
the next video coming up is going to be on uh, Endeavor OS, another distribution, very popular Arch distribution. This one doesn't have that GUI PAMAC for installing software from the Arch user repository and other sources. And I will be showing you how easy it is not to use that GUI, but instead doing everything from the terminal. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my journey through Linux and my Hamshack, please hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, this is Ken, W6BZY, your digital ham, bidding you good day and safe travels.